Well, it's that time of year again. It's Call of Duty season. Modern Warfare 3 is upon us, and as always, it's a highly anticipated game. Call of Duty seems to be highly anticipated every single year, despite it being the 19th straight year of us receiving a Call of Duty game. I'm not sure yet if I will be playing this year's game, but I will definitely be keeping tabs on it for sure. I really am interested in seeing how this game performs this year, considering all the new things it's trying to do. But anyways, I am feeling a bit nostalgic lately as I've been thinking about the games in the past that I grew up on, both multiplayer and the campaigns themselves. I grew up playing the original Modern Warfare trilogy and playing games like Black Ops 1 and 2. I spent a ton of time playing multiplayer with friends back then, but I also love the campaigns. Even the campaigns from the earliest games back when it was all World War II, like Call of Duty Finest Hour, Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1. The campaigns back then were awesome, and I have a lot of fond memories replaying those campaigns a hundred times with my dad and my friends. I miss those games and those times. So, I have decided to make a three-part series talking about the Call of Duty campaigns back during the early days of the franchise. So in this video, part one, we'll be focused on the first couple of games, back when the franchise started off as a World War II shooter. So let's take a look back at some of the oldest Call of Duty campaigns. Let's travel all the way back to 2004 and take a look at Call of Duty Finest Hour. It was the first console installment for the franchise. The game is based on the original Call of Duty, which was released for Windows. The game was pretty simple and it did feature multiplayer, but as we know, multiplayer was nowhere near what it is today. The game actually featured a health bar and health pack, something that you don't really see in Call of Duty games today or really in many shooters left in this current day and age of video games. And I do want to give a quick shout out to the game's music composer, Michael Giacchino. He's known for composing music in the Medal of Honor franchise and in many movie franchises as well. The game's story was broken into three different parts, a total of 19 missions. You got to fight in three different geographical locations. The game starts with the Soviet campaign on the Eastern Front. The Russian missions focused on you defending Stalingrad against the Nazis. One of the most memorable moments from this campaign was teaming up with female sniper Tanya Pavlovna. She was a badass who fought alongside you. Then the game sends you to North Africa to fight with the British Army. This part was not as memorable as the other two in my opinion, and the third and final act was located in the Western Front, where you would play as the Americans. These missions occurred near the end of the war as the American army was trying to push into Germany. One of the best parts was when you fought in a tank with an African American tank battalion. There's not much to say on this game, but that's not a bad thing. This was your typical early 2000s game. We view the graphics as bad nowadays, and it did kind of feel like a generic shooter, but it did have a few moments here and there with things that got intense and memorable moments, especially during the big battles. But as someone who loves World War II history, it was nice to take part in battles across multiple fronts. So then in 2005, Activision followed up Finest Hour with Call of Duty 2. This game drastically improved in all areas. The graphics were better, the controls felt much smoother for aiming, crouching, and going prone. Gaining the ability to vault over low walls and other obstacles was also a game-changing thing. And then you had the regenerative health system that came into place, which was probably the most celebrated feature in the game. This campaign was once again split into three parts and a little bit longer, a total of 27 missions. It's pretty similar in regards to the three campaigns featuring the Russians, the British, and the American armies again. The Soviet campaign featured missions defending Moscow and Stalingrad again. The British campaign was much better in this game, in my opinion. Their campaign features missions in Africa and France. The battles were much more intense and memorable. And fun fact, Captain Price made an appearance in this game. He was first introduced in the 2003 PC Call of Duty game, and then we finally got him for the first time on console here in Call of Duty 2. The American campaign was the most intense and memorable in my opinion. Battles took place during D-Day and near the end of the war in Germany. The D-Day assault on Point du Hoc was awesome. Not only did you have to swarm the beach, but you also had to climb up a cliff. Other missions had you digging in and defending objectives against intense Nazi assaults. Overall, Call of Duty 2 has one of the greatest single player experiences in the entire franchise. It wasn't just a bunch of run and gun missions, you had multiple objectives to complete and expansive battlefields aka maps. The game engine allowed for weather effects like sandstorms and blizzards, and the battle chatter system was also invented which meant your fellow soldiers were able to talk during battles in order to create situational awareness. 
This really was a great campaign. Call of Duty 2 Big Red 1 came out in 2005 as well. It was considered a side story for the original Call of Duty 2. I guess it was considered an old-gen game because it was only released on the GameCube, PS2, and original Xbox. It did not come out to PC or the Xbox 360. The game can be considered a step back in terms of graphics and performance due to it coming out on the previous consoles, but this game's campaign had something that many other games in the franchise did not, a legitimate war story with personality. The story focused on a squad of soldiers from the U.S. Army's 1st Infantry Division, nicknamed the Big Red One. The squad is filled with memorable characters, they all have their own unique personalities and characteristics. Solid voice acting helps too, and it was very good in this game because the list of actors actually included many from the award-winning HBO miniseries Band of Brothers. The 14 missions in this game take you throughout many battles and fronts throughout World War II. You fight in Africa, then Sicily, France, and you finish off in Germany. There's also a few special missions where you get to be the gunner in a B-24 bomber, and other times where you will be fighting in a tank. Like I said, the graphics and gameplay aren't on the same level as the OG Call of Duty 2, but this was an awesome story and you do get attached to the characters, and some eventually get wounded and killed along the way, which makes you emotional as you deal with the intense combat and consequences from the battles. Mark Hamill actually did some voiceover work for the game as well. I actually didn't know this until recently, you know, looking up stuff from the game again. He did voiceover work for the period footage from the military channel that played in between the missions. I also appreciated the fact that the developers wanted to educate you about the war. It wasn't just pure entertainment. I just really enjoyed that authentic story that a group of guys were forced to come together during a war and go through hell. The game didn't feature action movie thriller moments like a lot of future titles would, and there's nothing wrong with that, but there is something to be said about getting a game slash story with a more serious and authentic tone. So 2006 comes around and that featured yet another World War II Call of Duty game, Call of Duty 3. And I don't say that as a bad thing because Call of Duty 3 was a really good game. As the years go on, you could tell that the games are getting better in terms of graphics, performance, and the storytelling. Call of Duty 3 features 14 missions. Those 14 missions are split up into four different perspectives of the Battle of Normandy as the Allied forces fought to gain a foothold in Europe during the summer of 1944. You got to play as four different soldiers in four different armies. The American and British armies are once again in the spotlight, however the Canadian and Polish armies were added to the mix as well. Each of the four armies had characters with personalities that made the conversations during and after the battles interesting, and again, emotional when people got wounded or killed. Each part of the campaign is unique. The Americans have some intense straightforward battles, the British portion features a squad working with the French resistance after dropping behind enemy lines, the Canadians go through some intense battles as well, and then you have the Polish missions who feature both boots on the ground and some tank battles. A couple of gameplay additions to this title included the ability to throw back enemy grenades for the first time ever. The game also had some scripted close combat moments and a few occasions where you would arm explosives. Those close combat encounters were pretty cool as you wrestled with enemy soldiers to grab their gun and hit them and just survive, you know, that close quarters intense face-to-face -face moments. And again, they're scripted and it's a lot of button mashing, but it still is pretty cool and a change of pace and just gives you some different gameplay elements, again, new to the franchise at that time. This campaign was one of the greatest thanks to the combination of good storytelling, characters, and gameplay. So after taking a quick break from the World War II genre in 2007 when Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare came out, the following year in 2008, Activision decided to go back to World War II. And that was fine by me, because Call of Duty World at War is my favorite game in the franchise. The campaign, the multiplayer, zombies, and basically almost every little detail from this game made it a must play. I actually have a whole video on the channel dedicated to that campaign, I'll be sure to link it at the end of the video. I have no problem talking about this game again though. The story was fantastic and this was, and still is, the only Call of Duty game to be this gritty. This game was gory, limbs would fly off, bodies would be bloody and burnt, and it was like this in multiplayer as well. And in my opinion, the game didn't follow that Hollywood action movie model from the previous game like they started to do with the Modern Warfare series. This game wanted to be gritty and focus on having a more serious tone and just going through the intense, bloody moments of combat. 
The campaign was split into two parts. We yet again play as the Russians and the Americans. At least the American campaign was based in the Pacific, so it was somewhat different as you were the United States Marines facing off against the Japanese. We didn't get a huge list of awesome characters in this one, but we did get the Russian badass Viktor Reznov. He was the epitome of Russian brutality and revenge. Soldiers surrendering were killed. Molotovs were thrown to burn crops and soldiers. Flamethrowers were used in the Pacific. Japanese soldiers would rush towards you doing bonsai charges. The game is just flat out intense from start to finish. I mean, they would be throwing grenades at you nonstop. This game is known for you just constantly throwing back enemy grenades. It's hilarious, especially when you play on the higher difficulties. And the game really just starts off with that serious tone from the get-go with you being a prisoner who is being tortured at the very beginning of the game. So yeah, be sure to check out my full video on this game for more. I also made a video solely on Zombies 2, so I'll be sure to share and link up these videos so you can go check those out after this video as well. So I could go on and on about this game though, honestly. It really is my favorite of all time. You know, it's crazy to go back and look at these games because we have come so far in so many aspects in gaming. Yeah, these games haven't aged well in terms of graphics and controls, but what's special about them is the care and the effort put into these games by the developers. These games came out in a much simpler time, so yeah, of course the developers had plenty of time and resources to tweak each mission and have everything met to their standards that they set. Especially since multiplayer wasn't as big as it is today, and the devs didn't have to worry about spending a huge chunk of time working on Battle Pass content. Man, do I miss those days. And as someone who is interested in World War II history, it was nice to learn and engage with the history in a unique way. Yes, it is cool to kick Nazi ass, but it is also valuable to learn the truth behind the gameplay. That war is truly hell. Well, thanks for watching the video. Go check out the other content on the channel, especially the other two parts of this little mini-series, which will be coming out soon. Feel free to subscribe as well. You can also find my content on podcasting platforms. Just Google Analyze This Podcast. You can also find me on X and TikTok, X at Analyze This underscore YT, and TikTok at Analyze This 54 underscore YT. Thanks again, and take care.